Good day, guys. Welcome to another session of Management 101 for our Lecture 2. Welcome. And I'd like to show or share with you the results of what style of manager am I yeah, there. So, democratic. As I was scanning your answers, I saw most were democratics and then others were consultative and lazy fair. Note that there's no right or wrong answer here. And this is for the purpose of awareness. I was also quite surprised um, when I had the results. So I was just happy. So when you are a democratic kind of manager, your decision-making is always collaborative. And we ensure that employee uh, employees' voice are being heard. I think that's, uh, that also reflects how I handle my subjects. Sometimes, yun nga, lahat naman kasi may pros and cons, but it's just a matter of managing expectations and perhaps handling the issues well. So, wala namang hindi nadadaan sa mabuting usapan, right? Mabuting, <laughs> mabuting usapan. Okay, so let's proceed with our discussion for today and that will be the organizational environment. Have you guys read your course pa? Wow, sino tapos na dito magbasa ng uh, course pack materials? Anywho, our objectives uh, for this morning are the following. Identify components of environment, how environment affects organizations and vice versa. Manifestations of culture, how culture affects organizations and how organizations cope and manage environment. Before that, guys, I would like to ask you a question. So I need some answers when we meet synchronously. Why do you think couples, not just in the Philippines, but worldwide celebrate Monsari? Okay, I have my answers, but I will answer you during our synchronous session. Okay, so moving forward, what are the two views of management? We have the omnipotent view and the symbolic view. When we speak of the omnipotent view, it means that the manager is responsible for the rise and fall of the organization. And it has some reflection on the organizational culture that exists inside the organization. Okay, so for the symbolic view is that sabihin ni manager, eh, hindi ko kasalanan yan, kaya nag-fail because of the external forces. One of the classic or great examples that we can give is this pandemic. Diba, 98% of our businesses are MSMEs and about 30 to 40% of them shut down because they can no longer, what, operate their business due to lack or few number of Customers. Sa UP na lang, di ba? A lot of businesses actually shut down. If you have noticed, if you're from LD or um, have gone back to LD recently, wala nang ano, KFC. Uh, natakot nga ako. Actually, parang I was quite sad last year because I heard that if McDonald's at Vega Center was not able to meet the expected sales per month, magsha-shut down sila. But fortunately, thank God, operating pa rin naman sila. Now, the managers, you being a manager in the future or perhaps uh, being your own boss or entrepreneur, your, dis, uh, your decision will be based where? On the existing organizational culture and the organizational environment. This is something, the organizational culture is something internal while the organizational environment is external. And that's the time that you, had, you would have a decision. Now, what are organizations, you might be asking? These are open systems that are affecting and affected by the forces in the environment. Later, we're going to discuss one by one this, um, ano ba tong affecting and affected by, okay? The external and internal environment. Ito yung sinasabi ko, okay? So, the external environment is also called the general macro or external environment, and part of which is the task and industry environment. And for the internal environment, we have the resources, capabilities, what else? Organizational culture that, the, that exists within the organization. May it be private, NGO, or government type. Now, guys, why is it important? You know what? Your analysis of the environment, aside from it being useful for your industry analysis, which we will... Uh, have a draw lots later, okay, spin the wheel. Um, our external environment actually identifies the major factors and forces outside the organization. And this affect performance. So for instance, when Tal Volcano erupted last year, January, 
Okay, so most of the businesses directly affected shut down. And of course, sino ba naman pupuntang customer sa, pumuput- sa malapit na pumuputok na vulkan? Perhaps some, but there are a few, few people only. And your information about your external environment will yield a result to identifying the opportunities and threats. Moreover, for the internal environment, as mentioned earlier, these are the resources, organizational culture, capabilities that an organization has or possesses. And this will result to identifying your strengths and weaknesses. Who among you are familiar with the SWOT matrix? Can see a, a raise of hand during our, <laughs> during our ano, synchronous session. But anyway, um, a SWOT matrix is a management tool which is very simple yet useful. For what? To yield, not just to identify your opportunities and th- uh, threats, strengths and weaknesses, but to result to identifying or crafting, formulating your strategies. Diba? Kahit kayo ngayon, diba? I'm always telling you, why do you have to do this? Why do you have to, to study? Because you are eyeing for a prize or a goal, right? So, lagi nga natin sinasabi, diba? The goals, the guts, and the grit. Goals, gut, grit. Okay? So, th- those are the three Gs that we can... Um, live by for Management 101 for this semester. So what are the factors under the external environment? These are the economic, global, we'll be giving examples later, political, legal, social, cultural, or social demographic, and then we have the technological. Actually, um, we can have an abbreviation for it. It can be PESTE or PESEL. Uh, PESEL or PESTE, political, legal, pinagsama natin, economic, Tapos yung global or international, there's a point of intersection between these two. Okay, economic and global. And then for the S, sociocultural, sociodemographic. And then for the T, that's technological. For the E, it's the environment or the natural. Mama ipapakita ko sa inyo. Again, the general environment is also termed as macro environment or the so-called external environment. In between the macro and the internal environment, we have the so-called task or industry environment. And what are those factors? We have the suppliers, the customers, the competitors, and the public pressure groups. All right? And then we have this internal organizations in which we will assess based on the, not just the functional areas, but also the capabilities, the resources, and the organizational culture. All right? So I hope that's clear. Now, one by one, let's uh, have an example. These are called the macro environmental factors. Okay? So, we have here the natural or the environment, okay? So, for the economic, what are the variables or parameters under it? So, you have the purchasing power, the interest rates. Kapag maglo-loan yung mga businesses, what is the existing interest rates from the banks right now or from the cooperative? So, for example, ako, so proprietor ako, saan ba ako uutang? Sa banko ba? Sa tao? Or sa kooperatiba? Um, if I would make an informed and rational decision, I would go, for example, dun sa lowest yung interest rate. So, um, it can either be sa kooperatiba or sa banko. Pero mas mababa ang interest rate kapag sa kooperatiba. But you have to be a member of that. So, for instance, I want to put up a banana chips processing plant. So, kailangan ko ng mga um, 3 million to put it up. Okay. So, gusto ko mangutang sa ano, kooperatiba. But I have to have informed um, information or valuable information. And then, unemployment, inflation. What is inflation, guys? Especially for those in SEM, my agribusiness, uh, my fellow agribusiness management and entrep students and the economics. So, what is inflation? It is the continuous increase in price of commodities. And then, we have the income or salary level of people. Ano na ba yung minimum wage natin ngayon? Almost 500, right? But there's a difference between the urban and rural area. So, ano ba yung importance ng no economic factors mo? This will be the basis for forecasting and strategies of the organization or business and thus affecting the company. I'll just give you a, a simple example. Okay? An example for the economic. So, suppose, question, um, devaluation of peso or devaluation of currency. Actually, ano yon? 
puro advantages lang ba or puro disadvantages siya or both? Actually, the devaluation of currency has its own advantages and disadvantages. So, to show you briefly kung ano yung effect of the devaluation of a currency, for example, the peso, yung exports natin magiging, cost of exports ay magiging cheaper because of devaluation in peso. And thus, the company will increase its quantity of production and increase quantity of exports as well. This would lead to what? Hiring of more employees or laborers, workers for the organization and leading to what? A rise or increase in aggregate demand. Okay? There are positive and negative um, effects of Increasing your aggregate demand, it can what promote economic growth. However, at the same time, it will lead to what inflation or increase in price of commodities. Kasi di ba the simple uh, law, sim uh, sim supply and demand. Kapag mataas yung demand mo, konti yung mga supply mo, then what will be the impact? It will jack up the price. Okay, price of that commodity. Moreover, um, another negative effect of devaluation of the currency would be what? Imports will become more expensive. I, I can give you an example. Suppose that you are uh, part of a corporation or BOD for animal feed milk company. Okay, so there's a shortage of yellow corn, which is uh, an important or primary ingredient for animal feed production. So kapag nag-import ka, ibig sabihin na, kapag may devaluation of peso, mas maunti yung raw materials na mabibili mo para sa kumpanya mo. Okay? Or para dun sa feed meal plant mo. And that's the sense of it. Thus, o oh yan, lower quantity of imports. Um, let's move dito. Increase in quantity of exports also what? Ini-improve nyo yung current balance of payment natin. So you can just search about it. Okay? If you want to learn more about the pros and cons of the devaluation of currency. From the business or economic perspective, okay? So, moving, for the, moving on for the global, outside the home country. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na yung economic at saka global, meron siyang somehow point of intersection. Kasi, an increase, for example, an increase in oil price, ano yung mangyayari? Ano yung magiging impact sa mga businesses dito sa atin? Di ba, we do not produce our own fossil fuel, Right? Well, meron tayong mga renewable source of energy but uh, most of the businesses are still dependent on imported fossil fuel. And when its price increase, okay, so there will be, just like from the framework that I've shown you, there will be lesser raw mats that businesses in the country can purchase and thus that would what? Jack up or increase their operating expense. So I hope I'm getting across with you. Okay? And, um, there's a demand and supply what competition between and among nations when it comes to that. Because, of course, we're not just a country, the Philippines, who's needing of the fossil fuel, imported oil, right? And dito na rin papasok yung ating mga regional and world economic agreements. We have the AFTA, the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, the APEC, the World Trade Organization, etc., etc., Pero alam nyo, um, this is just my personal opinion and observation based on what I read and um, the way how I see things. Parang this is a classic example that the rich nations get richer and the poor get poorer. Kasi, di ba, remember the time when we, speak, uh, when we spoke of um, globalization, what's the synonymous word for that? That will be competition. That will spell competition. And when you have competition, guys, Okay, so it means that there is um, a demand for you to increase or to increase the quality of your produce at the same time lower the cost. And that's the only way the rich countries have a better or in a better position to what? To achieve economies of scale because of their technology, because of their manpower perhaps, because they have the capital for that. Okay. So you can we can I uh, know agree to disagree or you can state or you can ask me of the uh, repercussions when we meet synchronously. Now for the legal political, this has something to do with the uh, laws in place, policies, rules, and regulations when we do business here in the country. 
Alam nyo ba na ang Pilipinas ay isa sa mga pinakamabagal ang pag-open at pinakamahal ang pag-open ng business sa Pilip- dito sa atin? So, itry ninyo. Maybe some of you have your own businesses. para ano yung nire-reklamo ng mga magulang ninyo, mga kamag-anak, kaibigan, or kakilala? Grabe. Grabe yung proseso at yung tax din sa atin. Parang naisip ko nga eh, sabi nga, nag-usap kami ng kapatid ko, tsaka yung some friends working in abroad, sabi nila, although the tax, for example, in other countries are higher, makikita mo kasi yung magandang effect niya. Sa atin kasi, yung taxes ay, even we do pay taxes, mga teachers and staff in UP. Um, pero kasi sa atin, kaya hate na hate ko yung corruption kasi you're depriving of the basic services intended for the populace, especially those people who are living in marginalized situations. So, nung college ako, when I was your age, wala akong pakialam. But then, you, parang mas naging ano na lang ako, socially and politically aware nung nag-work na ako. Okay? But still, I love the Philippines. So, I will still choose to say the Philippines. Anyway, moving forward, so we have here the, ano ba yung mga requirements when you open the business, the business registrations, and you pay for the environmental protection, meron yan, meron din yung occupational safety. Regarding consumer protection, nandito yung mga examples like uh, um, no return, no exchange policy, nandito rin yung dapat within yung mga warranty, it's part of the consumer protection. And then, um, ownership of business. So, for the different forms of business, we'll discuss further later on. But the basic ones are the sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and the cooperative. Okay? So, those are the basic forms of businesses. And then, regarding the requirements, pros and cons, we're going to discuss it later on. Okay? So, for the demographics, what are the demographical factors that, or variables that we're speaking of here. The population, how many people are we here in the Philippines? 100 million. And what, my question is, what is the relevance of this demographic uh, variables to businesses? Okay, in terms of geographic di- distribution, population density, age, education, economic class, or gender. So it's very important if you plan to go into marketing because you for one, you have to be gender sensitive as well and to take note of these following factors. So, for example, the Philippines, ano, na ba, ano ba yung greatest composition ng ano natin, population natin? Is it the very young, the teenagers and the young adults or the uh, middle age or elderly? So, based on statistics, it's the what? The young, actually the young and young adults, teenagers, yun yung nagko-comprise ng bulk of our um, population. So, you have to adjust what? The strategies um, for crafting or offering products and solution services for that particular nation. So, di ba ngayon, um, even ngayon or prior to, akala ko yung milk tea magiging fad lang siya, pero parang it became a fashion or it it had become perennial. nag exist pa rin siya. So, during our time in early 2000, ano ba yung mga uso nun? Mga kape-kape yan. Mga cafe, mga Starbucks, um, CBTL, Figaro, mga tipong ganyan. So, what else pa ba? Of course, we have to also be sensitive about um, ano pa ba? Yung mga, yung sa age groups natin, di ba? especially the elderly, what kind of services are you going to provide for them or to think about them? Products and services. Now, let's move on to the social culture. Ito, ito yung maganda. So, these are the attitude, values, norms, beliefs, and behaviors. We also have the religious trends. Parang sana meron kayong pinapaniwalaan. And this is also parang feeling ko there's an increasing number of agnostics and atheists, but that should not be the case. Okay. So we are just bypassers here in this earth or universe. Now, um, for the generations, I think you're on the Gen Z already. So what are your preferences when it comes to products or services? You are the so-called digital natives. Okay. So I really am amazed with your presentation skills, the use of multimedia when you present and you can do it 
fast or swift. Actually, when we had the SOT or seminar on teaching a few years ago, sabi, ang attention span daw ng mga bata ay 7 minutes lang. So, you have, sabi ko, how can you make your presentation 7 minutes? So, gawin na lang natin siyang, ano, mga 10 seconds. Of course not. Parang you can just hold the attention of the students for, um, for a few minutes lang daw. Pero I, I'm hoping that my students for Management 101 are not like that. Okay? So, I can just hope. And when you are a manager or a business person, you have to think or to analyze the social cultural behavior for a particular community or country. Even here in the Philippines, we have so many because we are archipelagic in nature. And uh, one of the things that I've observed when I was doing um, um, data gathering, traveling from different places to another here in the Philippines, parang alam mo yon when you go para paraho naman tayong Pilipino, pero parang kasi I'm from uh, Timog, Katagalugan, yan. Pag pumunta ka sa Norte, eh, parang iba na yung kultura nila doon. But, but to me, as a stranger, somehow doon, parang naa-amaze ako na ah, na-appreciate ko kung ano yung kultura meron doon. So it's just a matter of appreciation of the culture that, um, that a particular group has. Kasi kahit para-paraho tayong Pilipino, iba-iba tayo ng upbringing and background. So, when you become a manager or a business owner in your um, in the future or even right now, you have to adjust to what your intended tar target market needs. So, yun lang yun. And then for the technological, we have new technologies, di ba? And new products. Grabe, sino who would have thought na ang Lazada at Shopee ay magiging in? Before ano to eh, I don't know if you have heard of Multiply or OLX. Okay, for the buying and selling, you have OLX. Pero yung eBay ngayon, present pa rin naman siya eh. Um, although eBay is ano, parang from abroad. Right? So, ang Shopee, alam ko, nagsimula dito sa Asia eh. So, we have Yun, Grab, Lazada, Shopee. I, I was reading one of the cases, I was browsing rather, one of the cases from Harvard uh, Business School and there was a comparison of Grab and another same line of business in China. Maganda na siyang ibigay na case analysis but yun yung catch. Hindi ako pwedeng, hindi ko pwedeng i-share sa mga studyante ko yung nahanap ko sa Harvard Business School. But perhaps I can just give it as an example. Another Another one that I'm really fond of ano, sharing with you as a case sana, um, na i-analyze ninyo, Jack Mas, ano, Alibaba, right? He's considered the, um, the richest man in, in China or one of the richest men. Pero parang denounce na yata siya ng ano, or denounce na siya ng ano, China. Ewan ko kung anong issue nila kay Jack Ma. Okay, so we have the GPS technology, we have the smartphones. Grabe, late 1990s, I remember, may pangkaskas na yellow na ano. Pag naka-5110 ka na, that's Nokia, ano ka na, mayama ka na. Yung para maliit na phone na may antena. Pero bago doon, meron yung bill crusher, yung smart. Because the major telecom players are smart and globe before. Pero mas angat si smart dati, naging ano pa nga nila, model nila si Martin Nivera eh. But Globe was able to penetrate more the market. Pero may pumapasok ngayon na bago. And um, by the name of Dito Telco. Okay? So our technologies provide better ways of managing and communicating. Like instant messages, email. Itong system one, hindi na to. Sa is to. Before 2016, it was still uh, system one. Pero sa is na po tayo starting 2016-17, and then outsource, outsourcing. So, the business says, due to the rapid technological change, should also respond quickly. Otherwise, there will be, they will be called out of the industry. So, just like what I said, yun, meron din isa palang magandang case, yun sa Nokia, na na-download ko from Harvard ano, Business School. Um, perhaps I can just share with you the highlights or the key points why it failed. Kasi, Nokia failed to innovate. But they had a partnership a few years back with Microsoft. I don't know why Nokia was not able to um, take off pa rin in the market. So, a threat or opportunity. Para favorable siya for the buyers if we have a lot of ano, options. However, 
threat or unfavorable siya on part of the businesses if they are not able to cope with the rapid technological change. Claro ba? So, yun. Like this, ito. This is technology. Zoom. Ay, yun, naaliw nga ako. Zoom, Loom, Canva. Parang lahat-lahat na ng mga technologies na meron tayo. Pero sabi ko nga before sa class, when we had a physical session, we are so connected virtually but so disconnected personally or physically. Personally. So, I hope that um, in due time, matapos din to, so that we can see one another. So, kapag halimbawa na sa university na tayo, you can pay a visit to me at the department so that I can talk to you. Somehow naman kasi, um, makikilala ko kayo because of your names and I also have your profile. Right? Yun lang. Anyway, for the natural, um, actually, the goal of the natural or the environment is uh, to address or for businesses to craft solutions that will address the different um, environmental problems, just like what, diba, we often heard climate change, climate change, climate change. But um, how can we concretize them fully or really when you are a business? So, for example, um, in terms of um, promoting or engaging into businesses like the renewable source of energy. Okay, so we have different types of renewable energy, the wind energy, the solar energy, the geothermal energy, Okay, etc. So, um, what we're trying to speak of here are ways and solutions to avert the issue of climate change and natural resource depletion that will um, lead us to addressing sustainable development. And what is sustainable development? It is a development that meets the present generation needs without jeopardizing of the future generation to meet their own needs. So, at this level at present, what should we do in order for the future generation to have something? You know what, class? It's a dream. Although I work with, with ano, a project, I work for a project to, um, to study the Laguna Lake watershed because actually there are 13 municipalities surrounding the Laguna de Bay. And it is the, the first or the second largest lake in, in Asia. In the Philippines, it's the first. Okay? And it's the catch basin of all the what? Waste from the upland to midstream to the downstream. Um, there were also, when we did a study, there were also um, informal settlers along the lake shore. And um, it's one of the things na mahirap. So, paalisin sila. And um, problema siya malaki. And there are, there are also industries. Actually, there's a government agency in charge of handling Laguna de Bay, but it's a concerted effort. Um, that agency cannot do it alone. The government cannot do it alone. It has to be a concerted effort among the populace, the government sectors, private groups, and at the same time, mga volunteers. So I just hope uh, I have professors before who was sharing that in 1960s, 70s, of course, I was not born yet at the time, too. They were still swimming in ano, parts of Los Baños ng uh, covered ng Laguna de Bay. At sabi niya, ang dami daw talaga mga ano, aquatic species na present doon sa area. So, kayo, what um, sustainable solution can you think of to address the problems on the environment. Ako, I, I really go for the bioplastic, pero bioplastic made from ano, yung shell nga ng, ng shrimp. Kasi in one of the subjects before, sa ABM e dating entry one siya, may, may nag-propose nun. Meron din nag-propose ng ano, parang um, pot siya for plants and then dun sa ilalim, meron na siyang time-based na water para i-water yung plant. Para hindi hindi na sayang, kunwari, di ba, pag nag, gumagamit tayo ng hose kapag halimbawa nag-water tayo ng plants. That kind of simple solution. Actually, ngayon, meron na tayong hybrid cars. Actually, um, um, Toyota Company is offering the hybrid car, right? And some of the houses here in the Philippines, I see na meron sila ng mga solar panels or yung mga tipong maganda yung ventilation para tipid na lang sa ilaw. So, when you you build your own house in the future or business, think of something, uh, a sustainable solution. When we think of sustainable solutions, 
tuhog niya yung ecological aspect or environmental aspect, envir- uh, economic or economic aspect and the social aspect. So, yun yun. Okay? Now, meron ba questions so far? Just raise it to me in class. PM me or you can ask it in class. So, those are the examples. Again, I would like to emphasize, guys, that your macro environmental assessment is very useful for identifying your opportunities and threats. Do not forget that. Why? Because most of my students, even in the past, nahihirapan sila na i-identify ano ba yung opportunities and threats, ano ba yung strengths and weaknesses. Again, opportunities and threats are something beyond the control of the organization while the strengths and weaknesses are something within the control of the organization. Yun na lang, tandaan nyo. So, industry or task environment still part of the external environment, okay? So, we have here the suppliers, customers, competitors, and public pressure groups. So, the task or industry environment are those forces closer to the organization, but they are still part of the external environment because um, the internal environment or organizations do not have control over them. So, usually, it has the, they are the actors um, that have an impact to the day-to-day activities or operations of the organizations. So, they directly influence the basic operations. For example, diba, animal feed milling, saan ba sila dependent? Of course, they are dependent on the supply of yellow corn and other major raw materials, raw materials for producing the animal feed. Okay? So, they are also, they can also influence this task or industry environment, the organizational performance. So, yan, tayo, part of it, the industry environment, the customers, diba? Can you think of a product or products that you are really loyal to? Why? Because is it because of the quality? Was it because of the or is it because of the competitive price of that commodity? What? Diba? So customers are really important. And we do not have any business that we're speaking of if we do not have any customers or clients. Okay, for that specific goods or service. And then we also have our competitors. Competitors are competition to some degree is encouraged. Why? Because we as customers will benefit from that. We can have a lot of variations and we can choose among ourselves sino yung best for us. And we also have the suppliers and then the pressure groups. And yung pressure groups na alam niyo? Mamaya. So, let's discuss. Who are the customers or the clients? They are the ones who purchase um the goods, products, or, and services of the organization. So, tayo yun. Um, there's this so-called customer needs and satisfaction. So, for example, I need a toothpaste. Di ba sabi nga nila, pag sinabing toothpaste, ano yan, Colgate, kahit close-up naman yung binibili. Pero, joke yun. Anyway, customer needs and satisfaction. We need to brush our teeth, right? But, what brand of um, toothpaste can satisfy us? Okay? So, is it Sensodyne? Is it Colgate? Is it Close Up? Or is it Happy? Okay? So, meron pang isa eh, nung, ano, nung bata ako. Meron, alam yung Beam? B-E-A-M is smile, smile kami pag Beam. Ayun. So, it's a brand of toothpaste. Yon. Changes in buying behavior. Um, of course, when we find a replacement or a product which is uh, superior to what we're currently using, of course, we're going to patronize the product. For example, nung bata ako, ang um, ginagamit namin yung sabon ay Safeguard. Pero nung at this age, parang mm, para mas gusto ko na yung Dove or even the body wash, mga tipong ganyan. So, I need to take a bath. I need soap. But will it be the, the soap na meron sa market na bar? Or will it be the liquid soap? Mga tipong ganyan. So, we are the customers. Just like what I said, think of... um brands or products that you are loyal with, okay? To that particular company and why. So, sabi nga nila, Australian food labels might soon tell you how long it will take to walk off the snacks. So, Tim Tam is a local from Australia. Yes. Wow. So, sabi nila, for every piece of Tim Tam, it would require you 24 minutes to walk off the calories. While for Coke, it will take you around 41 minutes. And uh, chocolates, it will require you about one hour and one minute to walk off the calories. Imagine that. So there. Pero ano pa kayo? Malakas pa mga metabolism nyo because you're still young. Now, moving on. 
Um, for the competitor, sino ba sila? Competitor or other organizations in the same industry providing same goods and services and serves the same customers. So, guys, parang kung halimbawa, papasok kayo sa fast food industry, as an entrant, you do not compete with um, with Jollibee agad, di ba? Parang you start small and then dream big. Pero, there's this so-called strategic group mapping for um, in business, okay? So, perhaps in your higher um, ABME or management course, you will learn more about it. But, yun nga, um, our our philosophy should also be uh, aligned, aside from the vision and mission, um, dun sa smart, di ba? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Okay, so who are the competitors? So are... Who is the com major competitor of Jollibee here in the Philippines? It's McDonald's. How about for um, Colgate? It's uh, ba Procter & Gamble. Siya. You have Close Up, but we have also a local brand by the name of Happy. Um, for the pharmaceutical, do you know that Unilab is a Filipino-owned company? Most of our pharmaceutical companies here are from abroad. Okay, but you know what? India has what the uh, the least expensive um, medicines worldwide. Why? Because the government subsidizes them, and they have the government also invested on research and development, and that's why research and development is very important. Kaya mga taga UP ay baliw na baliw sa research. Okay, so grabe lang yung isang politician na nagsabi na ganong statement. So boboto na kayo wag niyo siyang iboto. Anyway. I don't know if we're, I'm coming, uh, getting across to you. So, fact, forces affecting competition. We have the new entrance, okay? The rivalry, suppliers, pressure to sell, okay? Pressure to sell at high prices and buyers, pressure to buy at lower prices. So, um, I would like to show you a framework of the Michael Porter's competitive forces. Guys, this is for the sake of discussion only. And... Um, to analyze or to determine gauge the this should not be haphazardly done ha this requires um information data verifiable data in order to analyze the competition within the industry so what we have here at the middle are uh, is the um, degree or level of competition for that particular industry and what are the forces affecting the identification of degree or level of Competition. So we have the threat of the new entrant, uh, buyer's bargaining power, the supplier's bargaining power, and threat of substitution. So for instance, let's take the um, instant coffee industry. So who are the major players for that? We have the Nescafe, right? We have the San Mid Coffee. We have the Casa Blanca. Casa Blanca ba yun? Basta yung kay Marian Rivera. A copy ko, Casa Blanca. So, copy ko is an Indonesian brand, guys. So, instant coffee, ano muna, um, industry. So, before we can propose or conclude that the degree or level of competition is high or low, we have to have a very good um, information of these factors. So, let's just do it simply, ha, um, qualitatively. Okay, so threat of new entrant for instant coffee is low. Why? Ano ba yung mga factors for entry? Of course, the cost or the capital, um, the manpower or the labor, the business requirements. So, there's a low um, entry to that particular industry kapag stiff or mataas, maraming restrictions of entering that industry. In short, parang madiwara siya. Okay? So, in terms of cost, of course, you cannot just produce like 10 sachets of coffee in one day. So, hindi ganun yon. Okay? So, suppose that the threat of new entrance is low. The threat of substitution is high for the coffee industry. Why? Because ang substitution mo dyan ay yung mga ready-to-drink beverages. Kasama yun. Hindi lang yung mga coffee. Uh, caffeinated and non-caffeinated products. You also have, diba, ready to drink juices. You have to, meron ka rin siya mga tsaa. So, the threat of substitution is high. And then, what is the bargaining power of the buyers? It's low because you cannot command a, a lower price for the commodity. Whatever the organization sets, kung anong price yung sinet nila, yun yung i-ano ni 
um, it take ni buyer. Now, for the suppliers bargaining power, sino bang mga ano, um, suppliers ng um, sa isang coffee industry? Of course, yung mga producers, growers, cooperatives, associations, companies then engage into producing coffee beans or coffee. Right? So, mataas yung ano, a supplier's bargaining power kapag they can command a good price or high price for their uh, commodity, yung coffee beans nila. Pero mababa yung supplier's bargaining power if they cannot command a high price for the um, coffee beans that they are selling to the companies within the industry. So, suppose that the suppliers do not or cannot command a high price for the commodity, mababa rin to. So, kanina, mababa yung bargaining power ni entrant, mataas si substitution, mababa ang bargaining power ni um, ni buyers, mababa ang bargaining power ni suppliers. So, somehow, di ba itong tatlong to mababa? Um, somehow, attractive pa yung industry in a sense that there's still a point for entry for for that. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa ganun ka stiff yung competition because there's a point of entry especially if you want to engage if you have the capital to engage into instant coffee production pero i guess, sabi ko nga sa inyo guys we're doing it simply but when we have the datos or data um it will have a different story na already okay so that's the michael porter's competitive forces model now for the suppliers so these are who are they who are they Organizations that provide raw materials or services. And ito. I just want to show you an example for Max. They did it a few years back. It's back. Chicken all you can. Natandaan nyo to. So before, prior to offering yung chicken all you can, alam nyo ba kung bakit sila nag-offer niyan? Kasi they put up their own poultry farm. Ngayon, little did they realize na mas mataas pala yung magiging cost nila kung magkakaroon sila ng sariling poultry farm. That's why they resorted to what? Purchasing um, chicken or poultry products from other companies who can do it. Who can do best in terms of production. So, parang goal, the, the strategy was to save on cost but it actually entailed or spelled more cost on Max's part because bakit sila nag -fail? When they grew the chicken, they were uh, of various sizes of which not fit for Max's requirement. So some are too large and some are too little. So their supplier encountered the same but they sell different sizes to different customers according to their preference. So para rin yan sa okra, di ba pag agricultural commodities kasi hindi mo naman masasabi dun sa okra na o oh, ganito lang ikaw kaliit dapat ha or ganito lang. So kaya may mga grading system na ginagawa. So for example, uh, a group of farmers form a cooperative to produce onions and um, they have to produce like um, kunwari 50 gram per piece, mga tipong ganyan. Hindi mo naman masasabi dun sa onion na yun lang yung ipoproduce nila. That's why when they harvest it, they sort it out. In the same manner with, for example, yun sa mga um, beans ng cacao, cacao beans, ginigrade din sila. Meron yung grade A, grade B, grade C based on the size size and quality of the um, okay, for the size and quality of the commodity. Okay, so wala na tayong privacy dito. Nakita nyo ba? Okay, so for the pressure groups, organizations or groups which may put pressure, klaro ba tayo dito, ha? So, that's one of the things. Sometimes, ano, it can be also an, a strategy for the company to acquire their competitor. Okay? So, that's why yung ginagawa ni Jollibee. Kapag maliit pa lang nila, um, pag maliit pa lang yung business at nakikita nila na may potential, ki bina buy out na nila in order to manage the competition. So, the likes of what? Mang Inasal. Si Mr. Injasia Yap. Yeah, yung may-ari nun. So, binay out nila si ano. Si Mang Inasal. Diba? Galing. So, we also have pressure groups. Andyan yung mga organizations or groups which may put pressure, influence, and affect the Organization, labor unions, allies, activists. So, ano ba yung alam yung pressure group? Ako alam ko Greenpeace. But sometimes we also have to be wary or cautious of these pressure groups. Are they doing it for self-vested interest or are they doing it really for social costs? Mga tipong ganyan. You also have to be deciphering. 
when I was young, I thought that the world is round and everything, everyone is good. But then, of course, you cannot give what you don't have. You have to protect yourself also against these groups or ano, uh, people. So, sigo, siguro ang dapat natutunan ko or matutunan pa is diplomacy because I always speak out my mind. And when I speak out my mind, it's direct. So, one of the things that dapat ko rin matutunan, which somehow siguro ini-apply na rin naman, is to pause for a while, see the greater picture or whole picture, and then saka ka mag-assert ng mga bagay-bagay. Okay? So, sometimes they do help the pressure groups kasi... One of the things na talagang bawa ko, kasi di ba we have here in the Philippines mga kababayan natin who are considered um, mga IPs or indigenous peoples, and they often reside or they are habitated in um, ancestral domain, so sa mga mountainous areas. And since the Philippines really rich in natural resource, minsan dun sa tinitirah nila may mga minerals don, and there are external organizations who want to put up business. Saan mo sila ilalagay? Eh, yun nga yung natural habitat nila. So, madidisplay sila. So, I commend really yung mga activist groups when it comes to fighting for the cause of the IPs because they cannot do it for themselves. It's one of the um, positive effects that I can see oh, na maganda sa pressure groups. Pero yun nga, if you become a politician or a business person, you have to balance the eco economy the social aspect, and the environment. So, aside from it being the aspect of sustainable development, but it also has to have a metrics. Sabi nga nila, you cannot uh, manage what you cannot measure. Okay, so, kung gusto niyo malam ako, ano ibig sabihin nun, eventually na lang, or tanongin niyo na lang ako. So, or, these are the pressure group, groups yan. Ayan, nagdoble yata siya. Let's move on now to the internal environment. So, um, earlier, what I said, one of the things na makikita mo in the internal organization ay resources, capabilities, and that those have something to do with what? Your functional areas. So, your functional areas are the finance, the marketing, the human resource, the operations or production. So, also, we have the organizational culture and this is part of the internal environment. Sabi dito, culture are shared values, principles, traditions, benefits, understanding norms of how things are done here. In my, uh, after, after college, I worked for a multinational company. It's a bank, an international bank, and boy, I really love the people there. Except that I was not okay, so I had to leave after a few months of working, and also, I cannot cope with the demands of the job. But, in terms of organizational culture, there really was a strong organizational culture. Imagine being a fresh graduate and being with the same age group from uh, top universities in the Philippines. That was really something good or amazing. Kasi somehow, yung mga likes or temperaments nyo, personalities nyo, medyo, ano, medyo nagkakasundo-sundo pa. So, uh, there's a positive impact or positive impacts if um, yung mga tao within the organization support the organizational goals. Um, those are widely shared, yung goals and objectives, the vision, mission, and deeply internalized. Or yun nga, naa-assimilate siya. So, that's why I'm always telling you that should you plan to become an employee in the future, your personal vision mission should be aligned to the, the organization's vision mission goals and objectives. Otherwise, wag na lang. Okay? But be in the organization na wherein it's not your dream job, pero you can learn a lot from. So, can spell strengths or weaknesses, the organizational culture. And guys, yun nga yung sinasabi ko palagi sa mga studyante ko na Management 101, your external environment will not adjust to you, but rather you adjusting to them. And um, one of the seasoned professors, actually, ano siya eh, Prof. Emeritus na siya yata, sinabi niya during our class that um, he doesn't want to hire um, graduates of UP, UPLB. Why? Because hindi tumatagal sa trabaho at medyo umaattitude na. So, we don't want to have that kind of branding towards UP graduates. It's not, kasi during our time, parang masyado kaming, ano, pinaflatter na, ano, it's just UP and others and... 
um, yeah, we, maraming matatalino guys. And uh, maraming mas, napansin ko kasi written wise, okay ang UP. Pero ngayon parang medyo hindi na rin yata eh. Um, yung speaking part or communication part yung nagiging problema. Pero ano, be the change that you want to be that UP graduates are not just um, technically equipped but people who can deal with different kinds of people from all walks of life. Okay? So, you, you need not be perfect but you need be someone na adept and skillful, hindi lang intelligente. Ayun. So, can spell strengths or weaknesses. Hindi naman tayo yes person. We're not taught to become yes persons all the time, but um, we are taught to think for ourselves and our welfare. Pero ang masama kasi, the danger is that um, you think you're not doing something wrong, but actually, there's something wrong with the way how you do things. And it's not proper. Ayun. So, what are the dimensions of organizational culture? Attention to detail, outcome orientation, people orientation, team orientation, aggressiveness, stability, innovation, and risk-taking. But guys, I still always take pride of the UP graduates. I have a friend who asked me, um, do you see yourself um, teaching in other universities or schools? Sabi ko, probably, if ever, I would go abroad, but not while I'm still working in the Philippines because I really love being at UP. Parang I take pride of being a UPLB graduate or alumna. And you are the future of this of this society. Right? So, that's why we have to equip you. Uh, not just technically, but also values-wise. Attitude-wise. You might be asking me, eh ma'am, may mga graduates ng UP na korap, ganyan. Be the change you want to be. Eh, pero if you try to analyze naman, from among all the graduates of UP, Ilan yung korap doon? Okay? So, still, I know, and there's something different when you graduate from UPLB. There's a sense of camaraderie and warmth wherever you go. Alam nyo, never pa ako nag-work to any organization. I have from one job to another, especially in my 20s. And wala akong organization na pinuntahan na walang graduate ng UPLB. So, it's really fun working with people who are are like-minded, but it's not always the case. Okay? Yun lang. So, organizational culture, para hindi tayo masyado magkaroon ng problema sa work in the future, kung ano yung personal vision and mission mo ay dapat yun yung vision, mission, goals, and objectives ng organization. But, guys, do not set your hopes too high na dapat ganito, dapat ganyan. As a fresh graduate before, alam nyo, um, I was imagining na that was one and a half decades ago, or more or less, I was imagining that if you're a graduate of um, um, UP, ganyan, or you're working in Makati, that, dapat mga at least 30,000 yung gross salary mo man lang. But it's not true. You know what? In DPI, Makati, at, during our time, 10,000 peso, 10, pesos every month. Pero kapag na-regular ka naman, tataas naman siya. So some of my batchmates actually work there. I, I work for an international bank, but our starting was like, 14K, but after 6 months naman, mariregular rise ka na or promote, then it will still increase plus the benefits. Okay? So, learning culture, we have the symbols, stories, heroes, rituals, language, slogans. Those are very self-explanatory, but for for example, the tagline na we got it all for you. Sino nga yun? SM. Palang ano, just do it. Diba? Um, we have Nike. You're in good hands with Metro. Bank, Haring ng Padala, LBC, okay, and so on and so forth. I will be asking you, ano yung naiisip niyo yung logo or tagline? It's very important why, in terms of association, when you speak or think about this, di ba, um, na-associate mo siya to this company. For example, Globe, ang simple niya, it's just a one term, and um, the symbol actually speaks of what the company is doing, connecting people, right? So, mga tipong ganyan. No. So, one of the people or business tycoons that I really am, uh, I really look up to is uh, John Gokong Wei Jr. You can research about him, John Go Mr. John Gokong Wei Jr. He passed away already, but he's the founder, CEO of 
uh, Gigi Summit, Jan Gokongui Summit. Actually, uh, may kaya yung pamilya nila. They were migrants from um, China too, na nag-migrate dito sa Philippines. And then, uh, nung pakanay siya sa magkakapatid, nung uh, high school yata, siya namatay yung father niya. So, he had to help his mother to be able to live or to get by. And then, he sold um, Jari or using his bisikleta. Such a humble beginning. But who is Jan Gokongwe right now, Junior? Um, he's one of the famous and richest persons in the Philippines. And meron din siyang payo na parang ano, sabi niya, um, parang yung magiging partner mo in life or spouse mo, piliin mong mabuti kasi that will spell then yung happiness or unhappiness mo. And as much as possible, value relationships, travel, travel with your family, spend more time with them. Kasi ang mahalaga naman, parang yung sabi niya, ang, ang naisip niya yung mga ibang produkto na ino-offer nila because of his traveling abroad. And ang ganda ng values niya, uh, family, family-centered din kasi siyang person. So that's why he was able to raise his uh, children well and he's so well loved by his children and his wife. So it's very seldom that you, we get to see or witness uh, those kinds of uh, people nowadays, right? but still believe in the goodness of humanity. So, organizational culture, external environment affects culture. Corporate culture is ideally consistent with organization. So, uh, for example, entrepreneurial organizations succeed to complex dynamic um, environment, technological environment, digitized culture. So, as an yan, example, mamaya. Ay. Yan. We have to be able to adjust to the characteristics of organizational environment. So we have the environment uncertainty, environmental complexity. So I don't know if you have I know, tried using this radio. Then I remember this. I was born in the 1980s and yung lola ko, meron pa nga sila nung plaka. Alam niyo yung bilog na malaki, yun yung meron sila. Lola at lola ko. And then ito, naabutan ko in my younger years until nung parang grade 6 na ako, nagkaroon ng Walkman. Parang Mm, yeah, means ka na kapag meron kanyang Walkman o kaya ito. Ito, hindi ko, hindi ako nakabili nito. Yan. This man. Pero meron kami nito, nito. Tapos naging, ano, early 2000, uh, iPod na shuffle, mga tipong ganyan. And until now, di ba, mga iPods pa rin. iPhones, rather. Uh, iPod shuffle. Yes. Nano. iPod nano. Yan. Gustong-gusto ko nito nung, ano, nung dati. Pero kasi pag, di ba, pag may iPhone ka na, parang lahat naman nito pwede na mag-play dyan. So what else pa? Naabutan nyo ba yung Betamax? <laughs> di ba, right now we have Netflix, we have etc. <laughs> Pero torrent, ganyan. Pero ano, dati Betamax pa lang siya hanggang sa naging disk siya, naging flash drive, tapos naging, kaya nga hindi nag-work na ngayon yung mga ano eh, um, video rental shops kasi meron nang ano, uh, available na online. You just have to subscribe. So, businesses have to adjust um, to the changes in their external environment. Otherwise, they will be called out of business. So, environmental complexity, number of components in your organization. So, how many competitors do you have? Um, dapat alam mo kung sino-sino at ano nung ginagawa ng competitors mo, especially the major ones. Who are their customers? Who are your customers? Who are their suppliers? Who are your suppliers? So, as a manager, those of that those are some of the things that you have to know okay so how do we um how do we manage our environment so you have to scan the environment the pester or pestle that i've mentioned to you earlier and uh, to 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 level of perhaps i'm going to give you a quiz on our synchronous meeting dami natin gagawin sa ating synchronous meeting yan i'm excited so make use of your time on Tuesday to watch this video. So it's kind of environment for the opportunities, for identifying the opportunities and threats, which are important in your SWOT matrix or analysis. And then you build the scenarios, the optimistic, the most likely, and the pessimistic. Those are, that's also called um, um, simulation, okay? So forecast and manage the future events, of course, based on data quantitative and qualitative, and then benchmarking the best practices. When we speak of, oh, how do you benchmark, for example, in terms of, of benchmarking, 
you want to ako kunwari I want to engage into um um selling milk tea ganyan or opening a milk tea shop do do I still have do I still stand a chance of being um viable here in Laguna for instance considering that we have uh Dakasi the local serendipity the local brands yung yun nandito sa ES Plaza ewan ko kung nakapunta kayo doon What's its name? Sabihin niyo nga sa akin. Ano, nanungkot ako kasi para nung pumunta ko doon, sabi ko, ate, ito yung gusto kong flavor. Sabi niya, ay, ma'am, wala. Tapos, ate, ito gusto ko. Ay, ma'am, wala. Sabi ko, eh, ate, ito na lang meron. Tsaka, bakit wala? Sabi niya, kasi, ma'am, hindi na po mabenta yung mga milk tea flavors na yun. So, ito na lang po yung ino-offer namin. Mulif ba yun? Well, anyway, so that would be for, ano, um, benchmarking. Guys, what I want you to remember, when you hear the word benchmark, those are the best practices of the a uh, firm or organization. So, um, if in terms of, for example, milk tea, where do you want to benchmark? Will it be Dakasi or will it be the local brand that you have in your municipality or locality? So, you have to scan your environment. That's important. And the most likely, kaya nga, most likely scenario, the optimistic and pessimistic, kaya nga yung foot traffic, ina-assess din yun. Um, a few years back, in 2014, um, there was no Jollibee outlet or store in Tabukalinga. Why? Because it was found from the market research that even if the people or citizens of uh, Tabukalinga will go there two to three times per day, it won't still, the Jollibee store won't still make a profit. But right now, meron na. So it's still based on the social demographics, right? The population, the social cultural, the behavior of the people. So right now, because of the pandemic, one of the things I noticed is that I tend to purchase more ready-to-eat food from the Alpha Mart, from the grocery stores or supermarkets, from even 7-Eleven. I really am I, I'm fond of it. Last night na, nakakatuwa kasi bumili ako ng ano, bumili ako ng lasagna, bumili ako ng ano, lechon dinubuan, and the ramen, at saka yung chicken shomai from 7-Eleven. So, yan, si Tita Ice ay nag, uh, namili lang, hindi naman nag-hoard. Tapos tuwan-tuwa ako. Tapos parang sabi ko, masarap kaya ito kasi yung ramen nila was just for 99 pesos. Eh, compared dun sa ramen nagi, di ba? Masarap talaga ramen nagi. And then sabi ko, sige na nga, for, for its price, okay na rin siya. But uh, I I don't want to ano, to buy anymore kasi um, hindi siya masyado masarap. Baka masarap pa yung luto niyo or luto ko. So I'm not ano, ha, bad mouthy. Let's just share ko lang. So, another thing is that um, under managing the environment, we have this so-called adaptation approach, favorability, influence, and domain shift. So, for the adaptation approach, guys, um, the organization has to change internally and adapt with what's happening with its external environment. So, one of the examples uh, by which I can share with you is Kodak. Kasi yung Kodak, di ba, nung bata kami, merong ano, point and shoot na, ay, merong camera. Tapos may film siya, ipapadevelop mo yung film sa Kodak. Okay, meron din yung Agfa eh, etc. So, what did ano, Kodak uh, do in order to adjust adjust their, ano, um, in order to remain relevant in the business? So, they had the point and shoot camera. So, naging digital na siya. Okay? Pero, I don't know right now kung nasaan na ang Kodak. Pero, um, ang maganda na lang, di ba, we have the point, we have the cameras in our phone, maganda, i-coculate mo siya pagkatapos, ipapadevelop mo na lang sa Kodak. However, there are organizations right now na parang i-coculate niya at a cheaper price yung mga gusto mong pictures na ipadevelop tapos gagawin pa niyang album. So, what I'm trying to say is that from the point na si Kodak ay from the traditional ones tapos nag-crop uh, siya ng solution to have that point and shoot camera at the same time, printing of yung mga pictures from the internet or digital cameras. So it's one of the ways by which they have adopted. So that's adaptation approach to their external environment because of the changing preference ng mga and behaviors ng mga tao or customers nila. Now, moving forward, we have the favorability influence. You can think of your own example and share it to the class. Affect the environment or compatible with operations. So, advertising, public relations. Alam nyo, when I, whenever I read this, especially during this pandemic, sabi ko, ano ba yung example na pwede kong 
ibigay dito, affecting the environment compati- compatible with operations through advertising and public relations. Alam nyo kung ano yung naisip ko? Have you heard of the Air Taxi PH? Kasi parang they have created, uh, of course, diba, we are we have limited movements right now. But of course, only who have the money can afford to um, afford to, to take the air taxi because it would take you like 30,000 pesos for a two or three day trip going to Luzon lang yun eh. Um, yeah, sa Luzon lang yun. Hindi pa nga umabot ng Cebu. So that expensive kasi yung air taxi para mga six, five to six people lang kayo doon, including the pilot. So you're like basically renting <laughs> renting the airplane or the chartered plane. Ayan, mga tipong ganyan. So it's one example that I can think of for the favorability influence and it's like creating a demand, a demand for the populace uh, related to the service or product that you are going to offer. Okay? So another thing, yung favorability, ano, influence. Um, yung mga um, delivery, online delivery, di ba? The Shopee, the Lazada, mga digital platforms when it comes to delivering fresh agricultural commodities. We have the Zagana, Agria, okay? So, the Good Food Company, what else? This, this is very common in NCR in urb and other urban areas. But DA or the Department of Agriculture actually thought of the uh, mobile, mobile palengke under the Ikadiwa. Kasi yung Ikadiwa, meron sila mobile palengke, meron sila ng online market for the fresh agricultural uh, produce. Okay? So, we also have the domain shift. Selecting the new environment. So, I'm going to show you an example of the domain shift. So, here it is, a short video. Sabi ni Nay, may pupuntahan kami. Sabi ko, son po. Sabi niya lang, basta. Malilimutan yung araw na yun na lalong lumiwanag sa aming bayan. Antaray may liwanag ang buhay with Meralco. Okay? So, there. Okay, influencing the environment. Um... Independent action strategies used by one organization to change aspects in the environment and the cooperative action strategies used by two or more organizations to change the aspects in the environment. This, is, this one is cooperative or collaborative. This one is being just done by one organization. For example, um, you are a group of companies under the same industry um, producing beverage, for instance. So, di ba yung instant coffee nga natin? Suppose that um, Nestle, um, what else, San Miguel merged into crafting solutions on how they can reduce the, for example, the waste in the organizations by the use of this technology, then it's a kind of a cooperative action. So, alam nyo, may pangarap ako sa UPLB kasi when I visited De La Salle, Univer uh, De La Salle University in Das Marinas uh, many moons ago, and they have the artificial wetland. Sabi ko, the university does not lack in terms of um, intelligence, in terms of, ano, alam mo yun, siguro resources pwede pa natin hanapin. But we can, can we craft, sana ano, no, maipropose ko yun, can we craft uh, to make UPLB, kasi nasa bundok naman talaga tayo, or paano ng bundok, really uh, a green, university, not just in terms of yung mga punong kahoy, but in terms of our practices. Kasi, di ba, pahal mo, nag-physical classes na sa laboratory, we dispose our chemicals, etc. So, parang, ano, there's a way of, ano, parang may artificial wetland. Actually, there's a plan of, uh, of, of putting up uh, a biogas system, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, but that's delikado sa university or regarding sa uh, a renewable waste management facility. So, sana mag-push din siya because that is an engineering job. 
pero pwede naman mag-collaborate. So, yun lang. And then, that would be all for today. Thank you for listening and for bearing with me. See you again, guys, synchronously. And I hope you learned something. Alright? So, these are my references for today's session. See you and see, see you on March. Ano na tayo? 19, 4, 5, 6, 7, 18. Basta Thursday next week. Okay? So, March 18. Thank you and bye-bye.